Scott Paul is the president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. Richard Florida is a senior editor at The Atlantic. He's also a professor at the University of Toronto and NYU. Gentlemen, thank you for coming by today. Scott, the trend in manufacturing jobs has not been good. The economy just lost another 3,000 manufacturing jobs last, uh, last month. Even so, Scott, you say you think the president can, can make that goal of, of creating 100 million, or 1 million rather, new manufacturing jobs in four years. Why are you so optimistic? Christine, I think it's possible. I actually think it's an economic imperative to do it to, do it, to rebuild the middle class. First, there's the business cycle. I, I think that we should be seeing an upswing with housing starts. There's a lot of folks who need to buy automobiles who have been putting that off for a lot long time. What we don't know about is, is Europe and Asia and how strong uh, growth potential there is going to be. The other thing are these underlying factors. We do see energy costs quite low for manufacturers in the United States because of the natural gas and oil boom here. We can expect that trend to continue. We can also expect to see rising wages overseas that makes the US manufacturing look a lot more competitive what we don't know about Christine is public policy hmm. and I firmly believe that uh, we need the right public policies both internally and then with our trade policies to achieve that one million jobs goal I think that we can get it done I think there's public support for it and I do think that it's an economic imperative that we try to regrow manufacturing I don't think it's guaranteed So before we talk about those policies let me bring in Richard you know Richard because uh, the question is, manufacturing might not be driving new job creation, even if you do have more manufacturing returning to U.S. shores. Uh, as the U.S. has lost manufacturing jobs, manufacturing output is up. Are we going to see a manufacturing renaissance, maybe, but it won't be a manufacturing jobs renaissance? I think the U.S. will always be a great manufacturing nation. I mean, we're one of the, we are the greatest agricultural nation in the world, and we employ less than 1% of our people. We got more productive. We got more efficient. We learned a little bit business and managerial methods. Uh, manufacturing employs, I don't know, 10, 12% of the population, but the figure I like is there less than 6% of the workforce today involved in direct production. Those are the people who are directly touching and making products. And that's been shrinking for the past several decades. So there's no way the president's going to make his number unless he takes a, a very broad view. But manufacturing will remain important. It's, it's just not going to power our economy. What's going to power our economy's job growth are two categories of jobs. Those high skill knowledge right. and professional jobs in which 40 million Americans work. We're going to add 7 million more of those. And then the terrible fact of the low wage service jobs where more than 60 million Americans work and we're going to add another 10 million of those. I think the president should focus on making bad jobs better, not, not trying to retain or gain strength in an area that's been declining in terms of jobs. But Richard, I mean, let's be clear, when you're hollowing out the middle, a middle that used to be uh, powered by by those manufacturing jobs and you replace it with jobs that don't even pay enough to send a kid to college, let alone buy a house, that's a real problem uh, for the economy. You could have strong manufacturing but not a strong middle class. Uh, it's not something people want to hear. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make those bad jobs better. We, we can't go anywhere with 60 million crappy low-wage service jobs. Look, my dad worked in a factory. He started that job in the factory in, the 1930, in 1934. It took nine people to make a family wage. He came back from his service in World War II, and with unionization and the new social compact and productivity up, he had a great job in the same factory. We can do the same thing for service workers today. But the other thing that's really important is not every manufacturing job is a good job in America. Hmm. For for every aircraft assembler or tool and die maker that are taking home 50 grand or more a year, we have sewing machine operators and others who are making 10 bucks an hour. Right. So just like our economy and our labor market are split, so is our manufacturing labor market. And the jobs we're bringing back, you know, there was a great New York Times story that said GE is bringing back jobs home. Great. The jobs that were there before paid 30 bucks an hour. Hour. The new jobs GE was bringing back home paid 12 to 20 bucks yeah. an hour. So yes, we have to do better in manufacturing. We have to drive the wages up there too. That's a really good point. You know, let me, Scott, let me ask you, do we risk on losing out on innovation if we uh, don't have more factory jobs or if we don't bring back factory jobs? Because, you know, my dad, who also worked in industry, he always said, you know, innovation happens on the factory floor. It happens on the factory floor from a guy in a line who figures out a better way to do something.
It does, and you have a slew of management consultants and academics at Harvard, MIT, and other places who are now saying that separating innovation from production was a lousy idea and that you should try to sell, uh, make things in the market you're trying to sell in and, and where you're innovating as well, and that you lose a lot of that potential when the production goes overseas. And so I do still think that there will be some offshoring. Uh, I think there are some folks who think that have, that's pretty much run its course, uh, but onshoring is a trend not only because I mean country companies aren't doing this just to be patriotic they think that they will make money and they realize that they have to align their innovation and production to be globally competitive I want to go back to something that Richard said about sure. the quality of manufacturing jobs uh, here, here's something nine out of ten manufacturing jobs come with health care benefits you don't find that in the service sector and by and large even though there has been some reduction in the wage premium uh, there still is no comparison for folks who don't have a for your college degree. It's about the only career path that's going to get you to the American dream, to a middle class job. And also, if you locate a factory in a community, you're going to get those service sector jobs. Uh, the opposite is never the case. That's why manufacturing is important because it spurs economic activity in other parts of the economy uh, like no other sector can. All right, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. I mean, well, there's so much, so much we can talk about. We can talk about tech and whether tech companies are going to start <laughs> to change this trend too, but we got to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, Scott and Richard.